Hi, somebody have joined? Hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah, hi. I can see a screen though. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so are, are you trying the uh, lab exercise and are you studying at uh, your end? Yeah, yeah I'm doing Okay, that's great. So today uh, we have uh, some agenda. Let other people join. So we'll discuss. Okay, so let me start, right? So this is the agenda for the day, right? Uh, so today is the session four, and uh, these are the topics which I thought we could discuss today. And uh, from the next time, I think it is better if I can send you the plan in advance so that you can also see from your end. So last day, what we have seen, we have seen how to create object, uh, how to create classes, what is abstraction, encapsulation. So uh, on the continuous track, we are going to learn something more. Okay, so we start with something that is called relationship between the object. Okay, so whenever we are talking about any two objects, let's say we have an object A and object B. So whenever two objects are interacting with each other, uh, those two objects can have a relationship like use A, has A, and is A. So we'll uh, also discuss what is the good programming practice, okay, when you should use use A, has A, is A, okay. And uh, then we'll discuss about the array. Okay, uh, so you might be thinking uh, what is special in array actually. So if you see here uh, in C, C++ array are actually primitive, but uh, in Java arrays are object. So it worth uh, at least exploring a little bit uh, so that you should know how to understand one dimension array, two dimension array and lots of interview questions coming into the array if you're going for any interview, like uh, how you can find element from the arrays, okay. Uh, insert element into the sorted array, delete element, insert element, and uh, some operation on 2D array. I think this discussion will help you there. And then uh, we'll discuss something about static variable. What is static variable, which is shared among the uh, different object, right? So I will tell you how they are going to be arranged in the memory. Uh, like uh, I told you a little bit about stack, heap. Okay, so we'll explore more on this. Uh, then there's something called package, right? Visibility specifier, like uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, C++ we have uh, somewhere that is called public, protected and private. But actually in Java we have a, another modifier that is called default. So default is a very interesting keyword which was not used uh, till Java 7. Uh, but actually it's a modifier also. So anyway, so we'll see that uh, there's something called final variable in Java. Right? Is, what is final? Final is something which cannot change. And we can have final class, final method and final variable. So we'll discuss uh, what is the use of final. And this is very uh, common question people ask in the interview, what is abstract class and what is interface when I should go for abstract class, when I should go for interface. So abstract class is something related to abstraction which we discussed from last uh, session. If you don't understand, definitely I will add something more, more into that because abstraction is an important concept. Uh, it, it is actually taking some time, uh, some time if it goes to the brain. Okay. So then we'll discuss something about inheritance. Okay, inheritance you have already used perhaps in your college days. We have a base class, drive class. Let's say we have a base class A and we have a drive class B, right? So I can say that B class is inheriting some properties and method from class A, right? So that we discuss different type of inheritance and we know Java do not support multiple inheritance. So this is a very important question. Why Java do not support multiple inheritance? Uh, what is diamond problem if you know what is the multiple inheritance let's say we have a base class a and we have base class b and we have a class c which is inheriting from both uh, class a and b so this is not allowed in java okay because it creates something called diamond problem so what is diamond problem i will discuss in detail so today agenda is little bit involved and i think from today agenda we'll find lots of interview question in few further session and this is the favorite question for um, most of the interview what is immutable object uh, I hope the name itself suggests what we mean by immutable. There are two things, mutable and immutable. So what is mutable? Something which can change. What is immutable? 
something which cannot change okay once you have created so actually immutable objects are very uh, important especially if we talk about multi threading environment uh, what is uh, threads okay how they deal with we can uh, discuss uh, in a few next session but at least you should know a little bit about a uh, multi threading environment that okay uh, we can have uh, something called lightweight process and they execute and if we have a immutable object if they share it is going to be thread safe so th these are some questions which comes to my mind which i will discuss with you this is also there like uh, what is string and there's something called string builder and string buffer so one thing is there uh, string builder is actually uh, a class which comes into the java version 1.5 string buffer is older class i think it is there since java 1.2 if i'm not wrong so i will discuss what is the difference uh, between string builder and string buffer in detail uh, you should know that string buffer is actually a thread safe class so sometimes thread safety may not be good because performance may be uh, badly affected if i don't need uh, multi threading support then i can go for uh, string builder i will also show you some code in which you can compare the performance okay if i'm running uh, the code with the string builder uh, of course the performance may be good uh, by the way you can see some spelling here builder and builder is a very popular gang of four design pattern i will keep a separate session on gang of four at that time it make more sense why the spelling builder is there right and then we discuss something uh, that is called inner classes okay let's say if we have a class a i'm just setting the agenda so that we should uh, go more uh, systematic and as per the plan and you can uh, always stop me if you have any doubt so what is the uh, inner classes if i define a class okay if i define a class within another class that is called what inner class and there are different kind of inner class so that is the agenda if we are able to achieve up to this and i think i should keep some 10 minute for q and a uh, this is i would uh, think that it would be a good practice for further session if we keep 10 to 15 minute for q and a specifically so that you can ask uh, questions to me at the end of the session and please note down i request you to keep a copy uh, uh, pen so that you can note down something so that uh, your focus could be improved about this training right and if time permit us i can go something on wrapper classes and there are some feature in java 5 which was introduced so we'll discuss if time permit me so let me start with the first thing uh, what is the meaning of relationship between the object so if you see here so uh, so this is the graphics which you tell uh, which tell you something about the relationship between the object so we have three kind of relationship between the object okay one is use Uh, okay, second is has a, and third is is a. So, what is the meaning of use a? Okay, so for example, let's say I'm a trainer right now teaching my uh, my pen to write something. So, what is the relationship between me and marker? Okay, so I'm using marker. So that relation is called use a. Uh, for example, I've written a sentence here: passenger using metro to reach from office to home. So, such kind of relationship is called use a. And then we have something that is called has a. So, what is the difference between use a and has a? Okay, for example, uh, okay, so I can say here. Uh, uh, let me read the read out the example rather than thinking myself right now. So, in fact, uh, has a is also called association. Association is further divided into two things. One is called composition. One is called aggregation. So, what is the meaning of composition and aggregation? Okay, so if you if you have never seen, there is some UML diagram. Let me draw it. Okay. So let's say I have a relationship here. Flat is part of let's say Durga apartment. So we have something that is called apartment, and apartment is a class. So we can say here, this is the flat. So what is the relationship here? Let's say uh, if we consider the relationship between apartment and flat. Let's say what happens if apartment is going to be destroyed? If apartment is going to be destroyed, flat also has to be de destroyed. If such kind of notion is there. then we say it is composition and in composition in the uml diagram we fill this completely black that means this flat okay let's say flat number a19 cannot be part of the other apartment at the same time it is impossible okay if i am going to destroy apartment at the same time flat is also going to be destroyed okay another approach of thinking about it apartment is also called whole okay and this flat is called part right so what is the meaning of composition that composition says that if we have a part that is connected to the whole 
at the same time it cannot be connected to some another hole that means a apartment and flat have composition right and then there is something called aggregation okay what happened in aggregation let's say we are talking about this example ram is musician from rockstar music group okay so we have something here that is called let's say mg mg stand for music group so i can say here that uh, there is a musician uh, share your screen sir uh, my screen is not visible to you mm, the agenda session is only visible i don't know let me let me try to find out uh where i'm drawing okay so uh, if if you find that the screen is not shared uh, please inform me because i'm not aware whether my screen is coming to you or not anyway so now i hope uh, this uh, screen should be visible to you relationship between the object isn't it yeah okay so that uh, screen i was discussing from last 5 minute if you have missed let me recap so i was telling you there are three kind of relationship between the object use has a and is a no, okay for a, okay so you see here we have something that is called aggregation it is very important to conceptually understand what is the difference between composition and aggregation because this is also interview question so what i am trying to say here aggregation okay let's say i have a sentence here ram is a musician from rockstar music group so i can say here we have a class called music group and then we have a musician let's say what happened a uh, music group rockstar is closing so what should happen musician can join some another music group i hope you can understand okay let's say we have a uh, some another music group let's say music group this is music group 1 and music group 2 it is also possible that musician may be freelancer like me and he can work with many other music group okay so if if one music group is going to be destroyed then i cannot destroy this musician group because this musician group can this sorry uh, this musician can be part of some other music group at the same time okay so that kind of relationship is called has it then of course uh, uh, what you can say here about uh, is a is a is very simple we always think about is a like employee is a person so i can say that i have a base class let's say a uh, person okay then i can say this like this that we have employee so this is worth understanding that this arrow should always be from lower to upper side this arrow should not be like this this is wrong design okay so whenever you see in any source google or anywhere you have to understand you have to draw this arrow like this so what i am trying to say that we have a employee an employee is a person so employee before employee is a person so if such kind of notion is coming we can say this is is a so what is my observation while teaching to uh, thousands of people uh, most of the people always try to use is a okay but uh, but it's not a good programming practice you should always try to first use use a if use is not enough then try to use has a and if has a is not enough try to use is a is a is very costly okay why it is costly i hope i will give you some more example uh, because let me explain you a little bit uh, because if you are creating thousands of em employees okay of course in this case employee and person is a correct relationship if we are creating thousands employee object we have to create a uh, memory uh, management for 100 person object okay so basically uh, whenever we are talking about is a it is more memory intensive so my advice is that whenever we are designing the code we should always follow this order first we should try to use use a as a and is a i think enough theory let me show you some example how we can code such kind of sentence in my real life right okay so let me go to the clips right so is my clips is visible to you guys oh yes okay great so let me start something about which we are discussing from last few minutes so let's say demo use a so what is my requirement so what is my requirement let me have a sentence here okay a person person let's say fu using metro to reach 
office from home okay so this is the english stat, uh, statement and i need to convert this into java code so uh, this is important how we should start okay so you should read it like this person is actually a noun so we have to create a class called person and metro is also a noun so we have to create a, another class called metro and of course person have attribute that is called his name and metro have something that is what a uh, two string uh, that means what some destination that is called uh, office and something called home so let me start the coding so we can write something like this class uh, passenger okay and uh, passenger is there and i can design a class let's say metro okay so class metro is there and we have method let's say move method in the move method we can pass a string source and uh, let's say string destination so we can write something like this moving from let's say what i can write here source okay to destination let's say using metro so we can write some code like this now what i have to do here uh, i can have something like this let's say private string name so i have a passenger name here now what i can do here uh let's say if i say something like this private metro so i i will ask you whether it's a good design or bad design okay so if you see here uh how to read this code i can say that a passenger has a metro okay this is the wrong notion because passenger don't have a metro okay passenger is just using a metro let's say if we write this code this is more pathetic this is really a bad code okay we are trying to say that passenger is extending metro which is a wrong design completely and i have seen in my life most of the people though those are absolute fresher in programming they always try to fix uh, inheritance everywhere inheritance should be the last option okay should not be the first option so this is also not a correct code this is also not a correct code so what should be the correct code let's see right like this public void let's say travel so i can say something like this string source string destination and i can say here something like this metro right so what is happening here i can say something uh, okay i can also have a constructor right i told you last time you people that you can use eclipse id what is the super just ignore it i i will try to explain you right now after few minutes so in this case what i can do here uh i can say here what i should say uh okay i can say here m dot let's say move and i can pass here source and destination and i can also write the name of the guy who is moving here okay name of passenger right i can write here name of passenger what i should write here uh name okay so this is the code okay inside the main what i can do here now i can say here metro okay i can say metro metro is equal to new metro so now i can create a passenger let's say passenger foo new passenger right i can pass the name of that guy let's say foo and then i can say here foo dot travel okay so foo dot travel let's say source what i should say uh okay let's say uh, from metro station a to metro station b and he is using metro so let me run this code right so now we have to okay i need to write this spelling let's say if i change the spelling and here okay so this uh, so simple let me try to run this uh, okay so if you are running it what is coming here uh, it's coming moving from a to b uh, using metro i think i should give some space here right so that it make more sense right so what is coming here moving from metro uh, just a source a to b using metro and name of the passenger is foo so the important thing you need to identify that how i am applying user in my code okay how to read this code i can say passenger passenger while traveling using metro how to read this code passenger while traveling using metro so this is a kind of user notion okay if you don't know this is how we should implement now the other code uh, which i am trying to explain you something about has a right so i can say here so i can say like this i have a class 
okay let's say if we are going back to our example uh, of uh, something what i should say uh, we we have discussed some example a few minutes back about uh, composition aggregation so let's say if we are talking about the flat and building okay so what i can say here we have a class that is called what flat so i don't write the exact code i'm just giving the skeleton code i hope you can understand so we have a class called flat and i could have a class that is called what building right so it is very bad if somebody writes some code like this this is really unrealistic okay this is not correct so whenever you are reading the code apply your common sense we cannot say that building is extended from flat in fact building is composed of flat so this relation is totally rubbish so we can say something like this okay if you know something about array list i'm just using it don't worry if you don't understand it we'll discuss in detail so i can say something like this okay so how to read it so what is the meaning of this how to read it what i'm saying one building have many flats and of course i could have some more method getter setter or something like this and then we can create the building so whenever we are creating the building we also have flat inside the building this is how we can implement something called composition right now if you are talking about something that is called is a okay is a is inheritance okay let me write a demo is a right so what we should write here let's say we have a relationship uh, employee is a person right so how i should code it right so initially i have to start with a class that is called person so i can start like this class person okay and person have some definite attribute let's say person have some string let's say name okay private string social security number okay so we have some attribute of the person let's say we have a name and social security number so i can have here something called getter setters let's say right and i could also have a constructor so let me design both the constructor here and let me also explain you something about super if you have never understand so it's very easy to understand uh, i've just done some trick from eclipse id and i get populated about getter setter but the important thing to understand this is a default constructor so whenever we do super what exactly it mean actually so super method call is actually called to the constructor of the base class so please remember person is not extending any class we cannot say like this so whenever you find a stand alone class in java because my person class is not extending any other class okay so if your class is not extending any other class in java there is a class called object class okay so object class is just uh, you can think like uh, object class just like mother class in java okay so whether you say it or not all the stand alone class okay always extend from a class that is called object class so what is the meaning of this point here what what we are trying to say that whenever the constructor of person is going to be called a default call going to the default constructor of object class okay so even if we remove it even if we remove it compiler is going to put it okay what i am trying to say even if we remove this thing compiler will put it from its own side right so whether we put it here or not it doesn't matter so even i can keep it so simple now here also this is the call to the default constructor even if i don't write it it is one in the same thing now we have created okay a class that is called person but we have to define a relationship employee is a person okay employee is a person to do this java have given a special keyword that is called extend okay so i can say here employee extend okay so extend is a keyword like if you remember in c++ we have a symbol called colon so rather than colon we are using a keyword that is called extend okay now it is giving me some error what it is suggesting me uh, type employee cannot extend itself one of the own member type okay so what is happening here let me think of this uh now cyclic okay the type employee cannot extend implement itself or one of its own member type so where i did wrong actually oh sorry this is really stupid <laughs> what i am writing here class employee extend employee this is cyclic 
I never tried it, but let, let me read it. What this error message says that cyclic detected. That means it is a stupid code. Eclipse is shouting on me that you cannot extend the same class. Of course, makes sense. Okay, anyway. So class employee, extend what? Person. Now let's say we have some attribute here. Okay, we can have something, let's say private string office address. Right, we could have also, let's say string double Okay, let's say salary. So we have some field like this. Now question is that, what is going to happen? Right, we have a class person, right? If you see here, we have some private data. So please remember one thing. It's just like that we have a base class called person. And okay, many people use this uh, terminology like uh, what it called uh, child class, parent class. So please don't use some such kind of terminology in Java. They are not professional, okay? In Java world, we always say base class and drive class. So if you see here, person is base class and employee is a drive class. So we can say that we have some data into the person class like name, social security number, but please try to understand these are private data. Okay, and private data never get inherited. Okay, so don't think this data is inherited here, right? There's something called default data, okay, protected data. I will discuss more about it, but for timing, you should understand that private data never get inherited in the base class. It's just like that, let's say your father have uh, let's say some money, but he's saying he don't give it to you, right? So what he says that it is private to him. So definitely uh, you cannot expect that you automatically uh, inherit it from him. It's just like uh, it happened into the case of private data. Anyway, so now question is that uh, we can also give here get a setter, no problem. I can give here get a setter, right? Now let's say we have a, a method here, public void print, okay? So now inside the print method, I wanted to print the state of the object. Okay, so we have a person method. So I can say here, says out person name. Okay, so I can print his person name. Let's say name. And I can print his social security number. Let me put it here. I can say here, social security number. Now, uh, what I'm going to do here, let me define a method here. But actually this method do not print social security number. It is simply printing office address. Okay, let me write it like this. And it is printing just salary. Let's say we print it here. Okay. Now person to employ, let's see. Now, of course, if you see here, by the way, this is the base class print method and this is the method of the drive class. Okay, if you see here, the spelling of these two method is exactly same. Okay, so I will tell you later on, this is very important condition for something called overriding. I hope you have heard something about overloading, overriding. So this is an important concept. We'll clear with the uh, same example. But now we have a problem. Okay, we have a constructor here, which is taking two values. Okay. This is taking two values. Now question is that if we pass a constructor here, let's say we want to write a constructor using super class. So what you can see here, this constructor is asking me to just to pass office address and salary, but we have a problem. Whenever we are creating the object, we can also always say like this, we can say that employee, okay, employee, employee is equal to new employee. But what is the problem? Whenever I want to pass, whenever I want to create an employee object, I need to pass some data which I should pass for name and social security number. Okay. So what I have to do here, I can say something like this string social security number, string name. Okay. And then what I need to do here, I have to use this super call. What is the meaning of the super call? Super call. call is actually used to pass the parameter to the base class. Okay, so I can say here something like this, social security number. And I can pass here something called office address. So what is happening here? What's the flow? Okay, so let me try to uh, run this application. Then I think flow will clear to you. Let's say we have a social security number is uh, 12AB name is equal to let's say foo 
and office address is equal to let's say Bangkok something like this and we have a salary like this 4000 so what is happening here we have just created a object right now what is happening here let you do dry run I told you there's a great technique that is called dry run right running this code onto the brain okay because I told you the most important uh, device God have given us that is called brain okay so let me go further on this so what is happening here if you do dry run here we are just writing new employee 12 a foo bank 4000 whatever so this value is going to be passed into the constructor call we are passing the four parameter okay the flow will goes to this constructor because you have to understand it have four parameter and it is also having four things here so of course it have one to one matching if i delete this it will not compile because compiler will complain me hey raj where is the four parameter it is supposed to take four parameter but you are only passing three one so anyway so what i need to do here i need to say something like this but now what i what is happening here because i'm doing super so this call is actually going further to this particular constructor right so you can understand although we have called the constructor of drive class but before the drive class constructor could complete the call to the base con base class constructor right so first the calling of the base class constructor will complete it in fact uh, this base class okay although this is a class person it always have a base class that is called what object class so we can say something like this super so whether we write it super or not i hope you understand it will always call the base class and what is the base class of the person object so of course before the employee class could create it the memory for the data of person class should be there and of course object class should also be loaded so it is basically called inheritance tree okay so you can say here we have a base class object it is inherited by person and person inherited by employee anyway uh, what happened about this print method okay i can also say like this okay i can say like this print if i do like this this is a very silly code let me show you what happened if i do like this if you don't have seen what i've done i'm um, actually i want to call print method of my base class and this is the stupid code i have written here okay so if i run it what is going to happen employee dot print so if i call it okay so if i call it what is going to happen it is giving me some error okay a long error stack and it is giving me something which is a interesting name stack overflow error okay what what why we are getting this stack overflow error you see here i'm just calling blindly a method inside the another method i hope you have heard something about recursion in c and c plus plus so it is same it is actually recursive but it is uh, uncontrolled recursion so what is happening here print method is calling print method again and again and all these method call is actually arranged in a stack and when the stack blown up okay when the stack blown up i get an error that is called what stack overflow error so how to deal with this i i, I don't want to call the uh, print method of the base class sorry uh, i don't want to call print method of the same class i wanted to call print method of the base class for that i can use a keyword that is called super i hope you have seen two use of super okay one is to call the uh, base class constructor other is to force to call the method of the base class okay so if i run this time what should happen should it work you see here it should work so what is happening here i'm getting some state of the person bank okay social security number address and uh, okay and salary right so this this makes sense right so this is what we are just trying to discuss okay so let me go back to the agenda right so let me share the screen if you are not able to see it which page it was so uh, we were discussing uh, the topic for the day and uh, we have just discussed something about uh, uh, these things which looks very interesting i hope you have understood something about use a has a and is a okay has is also called composition and composition is of two type uh, which you should understand so now uh, let me move to the next thing uh, which is called array okay so why array is so important let me i think i have a diagram i want to open this diagram i'm not very sure you are able to see this diagram or not okay let me find it for you so can you see this diagram right 
guys? Oh, yes. Okay, great. So if you see here, uh, this is showing something called one dimension array. So actually this diagram I have a pre-designed so that I should not waste time in writing. So this is how you should initialize the array in Java. Okay, uh, one important question, many fresher get confused because they are coming from C word. Okay, and how we have declared array in the C word. Okay, in C programming or in C++, we can say something like this. That means we are trying to say that we want to create an array of size five. By the way, what is array? Continuous memory location of some similar kind of data. Okay, but this code will never work in Java. Okay, because in Java, arrays are not primitive, they are object. So if you want to create an array, you have to apply a new operator. So you can say something like this, int x, okay, is equal to uh, new int, let's say 10. So what is the meaning of it? What, what I'm trying to convey to the compiler? Hey compiler, I wanted to create a array of size 10. Okay, and I'm applying new operator. That means arrays are object. Then what is X? Is X is the array? No, X is a pointer to the array or you can say uh, object handler. So if I draw the memory management for this guy, I can say something like this. We have a pointer called X and X is pointing to an array. And of course, array is somewhere composed into the heap. I hope I told you something about heap. You people are aware a little bit. So zero, one, two, up to nine. Array index always start from zero. So of course, if I'm mentioning size 10, it should be nine. So what is the meaning of this? Okay, we can say that X is a pointer which pointing to an array. And of course, it could have some base address. Let's say one, two, three, four. Okay, this is a very important question. Uh, in Java world, we cannot get the actual address of the object because if I can get the actual ob uh, address of the object, Java almost behave like C. Okay, and Java is more secure. Okay, so Java uh, creator have thought if we give the actual address of the object, programmer or somebody can misuse it. Okay, so even if we are getting hash code, that's not the actual address of the object. If you don't know about hash code, don't worry, we'll discuss. So right now, this is how arrays are stored. So X. 0, 1, 2, 3, 9, right? So this is how arrays are going to be initialized. Now, if you don't know, there's something called two dimension array. Okay, two dimension array. So how to visualize about two dimension array, right? We can say something like this. Let's say we have this notion, right? Let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, or let's say something like this. So what I can say, this is something called two dimension. How many rows are I have? Four. How many column I have? Five. So if we have such kind of arrangement, that is called two dimension array. Uh, so people think like this, uh, as we have done in mathematics, it's just like matrix. Okay, I can say here four, five. But in Java, arrays are never stored like this. This is a wrong idea about it. Okay, so how arrays are stored in Java, if it is two dimension array, that I'm going to discuss in next few minutes. Let me have a sip of water. Okay, so if you see here, uh, let, let me declare a 2D array. Int x something. So we are creating two braces here. I can say here int x something new int, let's say four and five. So what is the meaning of it? We are, I'm saying to Java, hey Java, I want to create a array should have four rows and should have five column. Okay, so how it is going to be understood by Java internally? I think I should have to design a diagram to better understanding. We have a stack. So this is my advice. Whenever you're learning Java, you should always have a pictorial representation. And even that's why I have advised you a good book that is called Head First Core Java. Have you started reading Head First? Nice. Okay, good, good, good. That's a great book, right? Uh, see, nobody can replace good books, right? I'm just giving you some guideline, but of course, I'm, I'm very happy that you people are reading that book. Please keep uh, that thing with you. Okay, so if we see here, we have a 2D array and X is a reference. So I can say something like this, X is a reference. Now we have this stack. Okay, let me draw this stack. So what is happening? Oh, sorry, this is not a stack. It is heap. Okay. This is stack. So what is happening here? We are saying new int four. Okay, so what Java is going to do, Java will create a array of four pointer. 
okay so we can say i'm deliberately design this like column zero one two and three so what i'm saying this is four and this is five so actually what it means we are instructing java hey java we need a array of size four but every element of array is capable of holding the address of further 1d array of size 5 do you understand what i've just spoken here right what it means whenever i'm saying new int 4 5 i am saying to java a java create a array of size 4 and every member of array should be capable of holding the address of 1d array i cannot store integer 5 here this is invalid i can only store a address inside it okay that is how 2d arrays are going to arrange into the memory right there is a very important interview question let me draw like this can you write like this let's say if somebody asks you new int let's say 4 and left it if i leave it Okay, even this will compile. Okay, what is going to happen? These pointers are simply going to be null. Okay, so that is also possible. But you can never say like this. Okay, this code will not compile. Let me write it here. Int x is equal to new int blank and 4. It will never compile. Right, because Java should have an idea what is the size of this particular array. Right, this is how we can visualize 2D array. I can show you some code, but visualization is very important. Once you get visualization, you can start writing a good quality code. Even we can think about 3D array. This is not rocket science. 3D array is very useful in graphic software. So we should have a good idea about it. So what I'm saying here, int x. Okay, so this is one, two, three. So we are trying to create a three dimension array. How to visualize three dimension array? You can visualize like a box. Visualization is very important in life and in programming. So we have something like three dimension. So now, if we think like this, I can say here, new int, let's say, I say 4, 5, and let's say I say 2. Okay, even I can leave it. Okay, this will work. But you cannot leave these two things alone. You should, you should try all this code on your Eclipse ID. And uh, as I told you in the first session, if you remember, always play with the code. Okay, there's no shortcut of program, but I'm just writing some concept here. So uh, how to visualize it? Okay, so how to visualize it? I have a X that is a pointer somewhere in the stack. And we have, uh, this is called heap. Okay, this is heap here. So what it means? We are saying new int 4. So what is happening here? A array of size 4 is created. 0, 1, 2, and 3. And every member of this array, Okay, every member of this array can hold address of 2D array. Okay, address of 2D array. So what I mean that this zero place will contain an address. Okay, can hold the address of an array. Sorry, can hold address of an array which can have address of 2D array. Let me specify here. So we have mentioned here four. Now what I can do here. I have to create an array of size 5. Let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And further, this array can contain the array whose size is 2. I don't have much space to draw it here. Uh, I, if you wish, I can take another slide. But it means that it is actually something three dimension diagram is creating. So we have this array which can capable of folding the address of an array which which placeholder itself cannot contain the address of 1d array okay this is how we can visualize about 3d so if we go to the eclipse id always remember one thing code is always simple than the concept so if i show you back to if i'm going back to the eclipse id where is my eclipse id here it is okay so if i'm creating this code here so let's say we say here demo array so now we can say here something like this sorry this is not the main so now how i can create the array let me try the experiment so if i'm trying to do the c stuff it will never work okay compiler slapping me what compiler saying syntax token on 
5 delete this token so you cannot create array like this can i create like this is it a array no actually it is just a reference which can refer to the array so if i don't say anything by default it is null even i can assign it null okay but i can also say like this new int okay and something like this but of course if you need to pass a size here let me pass a size here that is called 10 so what's the meaning of this thing i tell java hey java i need a placeholder for 10 and x is a reference of it okay so let's say uh, this is the way to create an array and i can say something like this okay let me make this like this so this is the one way there's another way i can also say like this is equal to let's say i'm writing one two three or oh, let's say i'm a little lazy i don't want to write this much so what is the meaning of this we are saying to java hey java i'm not creating only array i'm also initializing it so what is going to happen although you're not applying new operator java will calculate what's the size zero one two three okay five so java will create the array of size five and allocate the values and i can print it how i can print it i can say something like this and i is equal to zero i less than okay uh, never write five here that's not a good code you can simply say x dot length okay so arrays are object in java okay don't think arrays are primitive that's why because it is an object it can have some property so length is a property to the arrays i can say something like this i plus plus okay and i can say here says out says out x of i okay i can print it uh this is one of the way but actually uh if you don't know java 1.5 have given something called enhance for loop okay this is very simple i can also say like this and let's say term and i can say here x so now says out time so in fact this code enhance uh, loop is actually better code because there is less chances of mistake because here we are ourselves uh, doing plus plus so there may be chances you have done something wrong let's say if we by mistake have done something like this so what is going to happen if i run it okay i can get an exception that is called array index out of bound exception because by mistake i have forget i have unnecessarily applied one plus or let's say if i apply equal so what i mean to say uh if you can avoid this avoid it okay this is the better way because here there are less chances of uh, actually corrupting the array so if i run it again i will get a same problem that is called error index out of bound exception so whenever you are doing some experimentation with the array i will give you lots of assignment to you right now please remember whenever you are doing some code and you are getting this array that means you have done something wrong here let me remove this equal and now if i'm running it what should happen should it work yeah it's working so you can see here it is printing the element of the array why it is printing twice because once i printed by normal array another time i'm printing enhance for loop so this is one of the way uh, let me make all these thing comments and i will today uh, positively i will share this code to navin and navin will share all these things to you people uh, right so now how to declare 2d array i can say something like this new int okay so i can say here five let's say four so what's the meaning of this we are trying to say to java that is a 2d array can i leave this yes of course i can leave it right so that i was trying to tell you but can i leave it can i just simply mention it no it will not compile so such kind of question uh, i'm not going into detail because of the lack of time but you should also explore this question why this should not compile but why it is compiling okay i could also have 3d array right now of course it will not compile will it compile okay it will compile but i cannot leave it okay it will not compile so why these things are happening there are some question you can find on this on stack overflow so if i go back what i originally planned for okay so so what i should do here so i think uh, i have also mentioned this topic on my eclipse i hope we have done something on relationship between the object we have done something on one dimension array two dimension array 
and let me discuss something on static variable method and application okay what is static variable right so let me write here a class demo static variable and methods right so i'm just writing the name of class suitable so that you could remember what we were discussing on that day so this is the uh, title static variable methods and its application i think i have a diagram so if you see here let me find where it is so if you see here uh, can you see some diagram uh, something about uh, heap and static variable guys uh, yes okay good so if you see here uh, what i am trying to explain you so this is a important topic because uh, static variable and static method have so many properties uh, so what this diagram is trying to suggest to you that if we have a object let's say one object is there in the heap and another object there in the heap so they have some different state let's say we have a uh, because if you remember i was telling you let's say if we have a class called foo we can have some data into the class i can say something like this private int let's say id okay i could have static int let's say counter so what i am trying to explain you if we have a static data static data is never the part of the object actually this is going to store separately into the memory area i think this i was telling you last time also okay i hope it is clear to you people so static data is actually stored somewhere which i told you that is called method area okay so practically uh, i can give example i think the same example i told you last time but just for understanding so if i am teaching you let's say i am teaching you in a typical classroom okay and you all are there so what i can say here or even right now you are all seeing my screen so basically me and my screen is singleton to you or i am only one right so you all are getting my state okay so what i am trying to tell you that if i consider you all as a object my data is keep separately so that everybody of you can access it right so my state is not part of your object it is part of the class so basically i want to say that we have something called static data and static data is not the state of object okay not the state of object in fact static data is called state of class okay static data is actually a state of class that's why they are also called class variable right so rather than talking uh, about it let me show you some code so uh, of course you should not forget that static data is not stored along with the object that is an important take away from this discussion right okay so if you see here we go back to our eclipse id so uh, i wanted to explain you something about uh, static variable so let's say um, i have a requirement uh, what is my requirement i want to create a class okay class for storing player information okay so we can have lots of uh, players let's say um, i'm earlier i was a fan of cricket so we can say that okay we have such an or uh, what is the Uh, there are so many cricketer nowadays. I I stop uh, like following the cricket. Anyway, so we have a class that is called cricket. Uh, okay, sorry, player, and we want to keep the track of uh, all the cricketer which is created into the player class. So we want a counter kind of thing, something called counter. So whenever we need a counter kind of thing in my class, I can think about static variable. So let me tell you how. Okay, so I can say here, let's say class player. right i can say here private int id let's say private string let's say name name of the player private int rank let's say private or uh, what i should say score okay so we have these things i could have some more complicated class but it is enough so what i want to do i want to keep the track of how many players was created in my software okay if i am creating a game software let's say uh so what i can do here i can say a private uh, static and counter 
okay and i can initialize it with zero if you don't initialize it by default it is going to be initialized with zero so you can see here this is your static data all these data are called instance data instance data so there are three kind of data in a class uh, instance variable we can also say it variable okay we can say this guy as what static data static data or static variable this is also called class variable right so why it is called class variable if i'm creating five object of player every object have a separate copy of these but they all are sharing only one object like this so what is the use of it what is given to me as soon as player is created i should create a auto generated id <clears throat> so what i can do here i can create a constructor here right and uh, i don't ask id from the user now i can simply say here okay plus plus counter i hope you know uh, prefix uh, and postfix and all those things these are primitive i think you must have done all this thing in c programming so what i'm trying to do here uh, i'm simply saying this dot id is equal to plus plus counter so what is the use of it okay so i can say here let's say private uh, what i should say private void print okay i could have a print method here says out player id i can write some player id what's id i can write some more things here okay this is bad i want not to declare it private okay so just asking one question to you can can i create a private constructor inside a class guys can we create a private constructor inside the class okay my screen is visible to you oh, yes sir okay so i just ask you a question yeah. can can we create a private constructor in a class i'm not sure yes of course we can create a private constructor in a class you might be thinking uh, how hell it can be useful to me what is a very useful actually there is a design pattern we'll discuss in detail later on that is called singleton design pattern okay so in that case even we can have a private constructor so i believe if you uh, if you people are really doing good i'm happy with uh, your progress but i want to see how much assignment you have done from that side but if once you start learning java and uh, you start enjoying lots of interview question okay so what is uh, my my uh, like advice to you uh, there are lots of site right you can go to that site and start reading interview questions in java right of course i i will help from my side but uh, there there are lots of uh, books are also available for interview preparation book uh, i think there is a book let me show you okay for sir uh, i cannot open my screen is freeze okay okay anyway uh, we can search it my screen looks freeze i don't know uh, there is a, a good book which you can purchase so java interview preparation companion by uh, something uh, someone called arul kumaran okay i am misspelling him okay i don't know what is the exact spelling of that author but you can search on google you can find it java interview preparation companion i advise you to purchase this book and start reading it and uh, this is a very good book and if you don't understand some questions you can separately post to me and it is a very uh, good book for freshers especially 0 to 2 year experience people they can find tons of interview question in that book anyway we go to the topic back to the um, i was explaining you something what is the behavior of static data so we have a static data and the static data is actually shared among the object now i can also say like this public okay let's say int get player count right and i can return here return let's say counter so now let me ask you a question okay 
uh, I'm let's say uh, I'm teaching you on the whiteboard uh, in a typical class okay and let's say this is me and I'm teaching on the whiteboard and there are uh, four people let's say you people are four on the call let's say we have one two three four and let's say uh, one of you says that whiteboard belong to me okay another guy is also saying whiteboard belong to me but I can advise you hey whiteboard does not belong to one or two whiteboard belong to everybody I mean to say whenever you have a method okay which is belong to the state of an object at that time you can declare a method that is called static so you can say here public static okay public static end player count so why what's the meaning of the static method we want because we are returning count here okay and count is what, what kind of data static data so whenever we are talking about the static data okay we can define a static method and static method have nothing to do with the object actually it can be called with the name of the class okay so this is one of the advantages of static method now i hope you have a guess why main is static okay because main is static we don't have to create the object of main uh, object of this class to call the main okay so this is a hint uh, we have created a static method now let me create players like this so i can say here player player is equal to new player right so i can pass his name let's say raj rank okay i want to keep my rank good <laughs> the score let's say 3000 so i'm just creating like this so what is going to happen i can create another player 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 2 is equal to new player okay i can write the name of Fu and uh, let i rank him 9 and his score is let's say 2900 so we have created some players okay so let me try to print those things so i can say here sys out or let's say simply player dot okay what's the method player dot the method print okay print method is there so we can print it like this player dot print so what is going to happen if i run it okay run as java application so what is coming here you are getting two players and the player id is uh, one okay right i'm getting the same player okay because i had just called the player okay i have to say something like this sorry so if i run it what should happen you can see here id is coming one and two so we, if you can guess here i have used a static variable to auto generate the id of course that is not the use basically i want to keep the player count and player count should be one in the whole uh, whole class right so that's why we have created and this is the static variable i can say something like this okay i can say here sys out player player dot get player count so now if i'm calling it what it should show me it should show me two because how many players was created how many player was created two so let me ask a confusing question to the fresher this is the proper way of calling the static variable but let's say i'm not doing like this i'm doing something like this player dot get player count so if i call it can you see some yellow hair in my clip id you people can you observe some yellow hair yellow oh uh, no okay okay i don't know uh, maybe some resolution problem but yeah, if you try uh, okay you can see here it is a uh, yellow underline something yes okay so let me put my cursor here i always have a funny statement about these yellows yellow yellow dirty fellow <laughs> okay so you should not have yellow in your code like this okay so if i touch cursor here it is saying that static method from type player should be accessed in static way so anyway if i'm writing like this what should be the output output should be what should be the output if i'm printing player dot get player count should it show me one or should it show me two okay so let me run it okay so if i'm running it what is coming here okay i think i wrong, run the wrong code so let me run this guy so what is coming here still two is coming so please try to understand this is an important question why it is showing you yellow because it's just like that i'm saying to you people that hey people whiteboard is not belong to one or two whiteboard whiteboard belong to the whole class so same thing we are trying to say that player hey player 
the player count is not belong to you player count belong to what whole class that's why it is a wrong notion to call it we should always call it like this okay so this is one thing so if we go back okay so what is the agenda for us we are trying to discuss we have discussed something about relationship array static variable uh, now let me discuss something about package okay visibility specifier and all those things right so what is the notion of package okay why we need a package right or oh, let me write it here only okay so now can you see my screen uh, yes i can okay so i'm just typing why we need package okay so in actually package is used to organize your code that is the one thing and used to uh, secure your code as per as per you can say requirement because in c++ if you know in c++ we have a visibility modifier like uh, public okay uh, we have uh, something public private and default so protected right but in java we also have a modifier that is called default so what is the meaning of default keyword okay so first of all default keyword means that it can be apply on the data as well as on class okay one thing you should know whenever we are writing a class in java let's say if i'm writing class a class can only have two modifier applicable either i can apply public okay although i cannot apply default like this but only two modifier apply on the class okay public and default default you cannot type it but if you don't write anything by default it is considered default okay what i'm saying if you don't write any modifier on a class it is actually default scope default scope means what package private package private means what package private package private means that only visible inside a package okay that is the meaning of package private so uh, what is the use of this package okay of course it is used to organize your code but it is also uh, used to secure secure your code okay secure means what somebody should not able to uh, misuse this code so let me show you some code example rather than just talking about it how to create package in java first question if it come to your mind it's very simple you can right click this src okay say new and you can go here and see package okay so you can click this guy and i can write here package let's say a dot b so what is the meaning of a, b, a dot b if i right click here show the properties you can see here in my ubuntu machine it is showing src slash a slash b so actually a is a folder and inside the folder there is another folder b so you can say that package is actually a folder structure but it is more than a folder structure as i repeatedly telling you it is used to organize your code okay so we have a folder a and within the folder there is a folder called b i can create more packages i can also say like this okay a dot c so i mean to say we have two packages a dot b and a dot c i could also have another package let's say a dot d okay so now we have this multiple packages we have created now question is that if i am creating a class here let's say if i am creating a class called a so what is the information you can see here can i delete this line if i delete it will never compile compiler will slap me what compiler is suggesting me that declare package does not match expected package a dot b so of course i have a option that i need to add the package statement so whenever you are writing a java code package statement should be come on the top okay so what i have done here we have a class here which i am saying it's a public class right let's say we have something like this public void let's say do it okay so i can say here sys out do a method of a class in package 
a dot b so this is what i'm writing here now if you see here we have one thing here we have a public class okay what we have we have public class and we have public method or let's say i have a public data also here let's say i do something like this private and not private let's say i'm saying private and tam and let's say i'm assigning 44 although it's a very bad programming practice to have a private public uh, like data into the class but just for explanation i'm saying here let's say i have a class which is public and it have public data and public method right now i want to access this class in the same package okay let's say if i'm creating another class here client a okay so if i'm creating a class client a inside the package a dot b of course i can create the object of class a no problem whatsoever right okay i even i can say something like this says out uh says out a dot temp okay because it's a public data i can access it directly even i can say here a dot there's a method called do it so i, I can call this method in the same package in any way uh, this is very much simple but now i have another requirement i don't want to call this class a method into the same package but i wanted to call it into some different package let's say we have a package a dot c so now i'm creating a another class here and i call it uh, what i should call it b so i have a class called b and uh, i have a similar method here or oh, let's say i will write here me So I'm just writing something like this, do B. Package A dot C. So now we also have a main here. Let's say I have a main here. I'm saying client, client B, right? I could also have a main here. Now question is that uh, I have a class A. Okay, this is not into the same package. I wanted to use in class uh, in class uh, client B, which is there in package A dot C. Now, question is that can I directly use a class A here? Can I say like this A A is equal to new A? Okay, so if I type it, compiler will give me error because compiler is saying he don't know from where A class should be coming. Okay, so I have to resolve this particular problem so I can take the help of Eclipse ID. And Eclipse is suggesting me, hey Rajiv, why not you import it? So I can import it. So what is the meaning of this line? Of course, package statement should be the first statement. Then you should have import statement. So I'm saying import a dot b dot a. I can also apply asterisk here. Asterisk means I wanted to get every class. Okay. So you can apply asterisk and a. There's no performance difference. Okay. Many people was confused that if I'm applying asterisk all the classes of uh, package a dot b is going to be loaded into the memory no no uh, java have a notion of uh, class loading dynamically on demand basis okay so there's something called class loader in jvm i will discuss little bit because uh, once you understand little bit comfortable in core java i will discuss more about jvm but remember whether we say a dot b dot a or we say a dot b dot star hardly it make any difference because java comp java is going to load class on demand basis okay let's say we have thousands of classes in a dot b package it's not going to be loaded all only class a is going to be loaded if i'm running the class client b anyway so i can call the method i can call the method let's say do a without any problem now so this is the way if i have a public class public method it can be accessed in any way let me write it like this okay public class public data or method can be accessed in any way any way means what there is more than one way i can create object directly in main that is one way second way i can use composition third i can use what inheritance so that means i have a freedom i can also say like this i can say here extend extend a of course this will also work i can extend this class 
so what is going to happen now class b or sorry client b class have all the feature from class a so now i can create the object of this client b okay so i can create the object of client b and uh, i can say here new new client b and now i can say here b dot do a so this is the another way what is the third way oh, sorry th this is the uh, third or second it doesn't matter there is another way that is called composition i can also say like this okay i can say here uh, let's say a a is equal to new a now you have created this you can also say it's static why i'm making static because i want to use it inside this main okay a dot do a so i mean to say if you have a a class with static uh, sorry uh, with uh, uh, public modifier and public method or public data it can be accessed in multiple way uh, in java but now let's say i'm removing this public statement from here then what happened okay so please remember we cannot apply private here okay this will never compile only two modifier are applicable at the class level uh, there's another concept called nested classes inside the nested class of course nested class can be private but i'm talking about right now top level class so this is called top level class so top level class can have only two modifier that is called public and default default you don't have to write if you write it it compiler will give us error okay let me write it so compiler still give me error so if you don't write default assume that default is applied here automatically but if you apply yourself compiler will give us a error so now uh, this is what we have so if we have this class non public it cannot be accessed in any way it cannot be accessed in any way so a default class can not be accessed in any way that means you cannot apply any trick and you cannot access it that's why that's why a default class is also called a package private class package private class means it is only accessible within the package so that is one of the advantages okay but let's say if we make it public okay but this time my data is uh, protected okay so i could have protected data and i could have protected method so now what is the use of protected uh, method okay so if i have a protected method you can see here still it is not working let me remove it so that okay so now if i am coming and cleaning this code what i am just trying to convey to you uh, this time i have a class a which is public of course if it is not public i cannot see it any way in package a.c but this time my data and method is protected okay so if my data and method is protected can i get the object of class a inside client b let me check it out so if i say like this a a is equal to new a so compiler is still giving me a uh, okay compiler is not giving me any error of course because this is the public class but now it may give error of course it will give me error when i try to call do a okay so why compiler is giving me error because my do a method is protected okay and if it is let's say if i remove the protected it is by default default so the point is that whether you have a default method or protected method you cannot access directly right and there is a very interesting rule let me write it and this is a very important interview question what is the difference between default and protected in package concept so please remember point number 1 within a package there is no difference between these two okay so uh, if you are writing a package let's say package a dot b and i am creating a static data sorry i am creating a, a protected or uh, 
uh, what it called default conceptually they are same but if we have two packages let's say we are talking in the context of packages a dot b and packages a dot c then there is a difference what is the rule here okay protected method or data of an class a that is of package a dot b is only available available to class client b if and only if okay client b extend class a so that means only two subclass of other packages okay so if you don't understand code is more simple than concept i am always repeatedly telling you people this will never compile okay so but i can do something like this extend a so if i say extend a now this protected method this protected method this let me write here protected this protected method now should be available to class client b let me check it out so i can say here client b okay i'm creating a object new client b and then i can say here b dot do a can you see here some uh, some yellow box here this denote that it is basically we are trying to call the uh, default method uh, sorry uh, we are we are trying to call the protected method so if, if we we can call it but if i remove this uh, thing here uh, if i remove this protected modifier this will not work so that is the fundamental difference between protected and default okay as i told you uh, they are same within the package but of course the difference arises when we are talking about the two different packages okay so that is the concept so uh, so if you see here uh, i hope you can see my screen uh, let me find out which screen i am using here right now so can you see my screen hello ah uh, yes sir okay so um, i'm just going um, uh, from last one hour, uh, quickly uh, are you people understanding the concept whatever i have discussed till now yeah okay okay so let me let me go ahead uh, for uh, next few minutes and i think this is going to be last session uh, this year uh, and we can schedule the class uh, later on uh, but i have uh, more 10 to 15 minutes okay can we continue further for 10 to 15 minute guys Yes. Okay. I thought of covering so much topic, but uh, but anyway, uh, uh, but uh, whatever we should cover, we should co cover with the perfection. Uh, I hope you understand something about arrays, relationship. Okay, packages, static modifier. Now, uh, the important meat of the class today, uh, and that is the important question. Final abstract class and interface. So we are going to discuss about these things, right? So, if you see here, right, so I, I'm trying to explain you something about uh, these things because uh, these are important. So, what is the concept? Uh, first of all, we have to understand something called final. So, there are three uh, things here, final class, okay, and let's say we can have a normal class what we are creating since so much time and then we have something that is called abstract class and then we have a java interface so what i'm trying to explain you it depends actually right many people ask you uh, should we create a final class should we create a normal class it depends actually if we are moving from final class to interface flexibility decrease oh, sorry flexibility increase i can say here uh, interface is more flexible and if I'm going toward this direction, flexibility uh, decrease. So I can say here, uh, final class is more least flexible. Okay, if we have created a final class, you cannot extend it. So uh, let me explain you one by one so that you understand what I'm trying to convey to you. So first of all, we need to understand something about final keyword. Okay, so 
just a minute let me change the font here a little bit this become little thin okay so if you see here we are trying to discuss about final uh, keyword so there are four things can be final we can have final variable okay we can have final method okay we can have final uh, you can say class and we can have final method argument so what is the meaning of final final is it like a constant in c++ okay so we have a const keyword in c++ so almost behave like this so we have a final variable so if we have a final variable of course it cannot be changed if we have a final method it don't allow overriding so overriding is not allowed if we are using final method and then we have a final class if we have a final class it do not support inheritance okay and we have a final method argument final method argument is very important they cannot be changed they cannot be change inside the method so let me discuss a uh, little bit on this okay before going to abstract class and interface right because uh, we should go step by step can you see my clips id okay where is okay can you see my clips id oh yeah okay so i'm i'm going to explain you something about uh, first final so i'm just creating a new package so that if i share the code for you people okay okay one interesting thing if you have never noticed you cannot create a package with a uh, package uh, with the name of java keyword so i cannot create a package name like com.final it will never work okay but i can write here final too so you cannot create a package name with the java keyword this is the interesting thing we should know so let's say so we are creating a final class okay so what is the meaning of final class let's say we have a class a right i'm saying something like this private and let's say i i could have some here uh, what i should say get a setter so what i'm trying to say this is a class i a uh, class a now of course i can write here class b which can extend class a right but let's say uh, because of some reason which reason we need to understand let's say because of some reason i don't want that class a should be extended by anybody else in my api so i can declare it final so if i declare it final in this case compiler will give me error compiler saying type b cannot subclass the final class a so whenever you want that you have written a class and nobody should able to extend that class that means nobody should modify the behavior of the method of that class we can go for final keyword in api java api you can search there are so many final classes let's say if we go to the string class in java what is the modifier applicable here final if i go back to something here in teaser so if you don't know in teaser is actually a wrapper classes okay it's there since jdk 1 and it is also final so what do you mean by final class why java have created this class final because java have done a hard uh, work on these classes and they have written lots of code here let me see here oh, my god there are uh, 3000 line of code in string class okay so somebody must have written some code here and what they want they have written very uh, we can say detail code and they must have done lots of r and d before writing this code now what they want that you should able to use it but you should not able to modify the code okay because if you modify the code you have power to override the method which they don't want that's why class string was keep final so this is very important interview question somebody can say like this foo extend extend string so will this code compile or not hey guys things are going pretty fine at your side are you able to listen me yeah okay i'm getting some uh, noise that's why i thought if things are going fine or not so if you see here so this is my class foo 
which is extending string class. So it is not compiling because of the same reason because string class is final class. So such kind of one line question may be also asked in some interview. Okay, you should always remember a final class can never be extended. Okay, right? Okay, now this is the meaning of final class. Final class cannot be extended. Now I can also have something like this. Private, okay, let's say we have a method here. Okay, I can have a method public void do do fun. Okay, so I have a method here do fun. I should have a better name. So let's do fun of class A. Okay, so this is uh, my do fun method of class A. Now what I'm trying to do here, I can define this method again here. Okay, so what's the meaning of it? If you see here, this method have exact spelling here. So by the way, if you don't know, this is called overriding. Okay, what it called? Overriding. What is overriding? If your base class method is actually overridden by the drive class, I can define a new method here. Okay, new implementation. Even I can also do like this. I can say super dot do fun. Okay, super dot do fun. Right. So I can also call the base class method. Okay, that's why people say that Java Java provide code reusability. I hope if you refer some Java related books, uh, they are saying that inheritance provide code reusability. So that is a practical example. You can call the base class method like this. But actually, let's say uh, we have this method and this method is having a very important logic. Okay, rather than having do fun, let's say I have a uh, logic which is very, uh, very important and the author want, let's say, do hard, hard work hard logic okay i don't find a good name right now sorry for that so we have a method here what's the name of method something like do hard logic so what i want my programmer have worked hard on this method and they want that next people can use this method as it is but they should never be allowed to change this method in that case i can declare this method as what final so if you declare a method final Okay, somebody cannot override it. Let me copy paste this method here and try to override it. Will compiler work? Will compiler feel happy here? No. Compiler is slapping me. What compiler is saying? Compiler is saying override this is not possible, cannot override. So please remember if you have a final method, you cannot override it. But can you overload it? Okay, let's say we have a method like this and I'm passing here in time. Okay, in time. So of course, if we have a final method, it cannot be overridden, but it can be overloaded. I think I have not discussed about overloading, overriding in detail. There are tons of questions comes into uh, real life. Uh, so I think we can keep this discussion to the next uh, uh, session whenever we are doing. Uh, but at least you should understand for now that if we have a final method, you cannot override it. Then we have something that is called final variable. Let's say we have a private int private final private int i. So now compiler is giving me error here because whenever you are declaring a final variable, you have to initialize it. So now because I have created a final variable, you cannot change it. Let's say if I try to do i++, what is going to happen? Compiler will give me error. Okay, so the, these, these things are normal, right? I think if you understand from last five minutes, I have discussed something here, final method. Okay, let me write a final class, final methods, okay and final variable, right? Okay, final variable looks very funny terminology. It is actually a kind of constant. Now we also have something that is called final method argument. And it's a good programming practice, okay? Let me write something like this. I delete all this shit here. So let's say I wanted to write a, some code for final method argument. Let's say we have a method here, public, public void get let's say we have this class called atm card okay and what is my requirement i want to get a uh, card detail right what we want we are passing here some card id okay so we are passing some card id here and want to do some calculation based on that but what i want 
that user of this card class should not able to modify okay caller of that class let me write the code here so that you can understand so i'm writing here card card is equal to new card right so now i can say here card dot let's say uh, card detail what i should get or uh, let's say process card okay sometime i get confused in the spelling okay so now uh, what we need to do here we can do something like this i can pass the card id let's say something or i can also say like this string card id is equal to like this string class is a very important class we have still not discussed i will uh, love to discuss in the next session today is too late right so uh, what do we want right uh, okay we want that somebody should not uh, change the state of card id it should be read kind of data so i can declare it final okay so if i declare it final what's the meaning of this right so now if somebody is saying card id is equal to null what is going to happen compiler will give a error to me so basically that's the real use of final variables in in the method argument so final variable in the method argument it tell the api user that hey user we you can pass this variable but it cannot modify but let's say programmer forget to write the final here and uh, he has written some wrong code and he modified the card detail so it could be a serious bug so that's why it is advisable if you are not planning to change the data of the method argument of a class you should always declare it what fine okay so we have also discussed final class final method final variable and final method argument right okay so uh, i think uh, that's it enough for the day uh, because uh, we did a lot right okay so so any questions from your side what we have discussed from last 1 hour 30 minutes okay so we have discussed relationship between the object use a has a is a composition aggregation okay what is good programming practice what is array any questions from your side friends we have discussed uh, array static variable what is package what are the advantages of package right we have discussed something about final so any question from your side no okay so uh, i i i again request you people to uh, go and do the lab assignment okay if you forget uh, where is the lab assignment right so if you see here uh, this is the oops exercise are you doing this oops exercise are you able to understand this uml diagram try to, try to write some code let me go in next few minutes next 2 minute or 5 minute let's say and show what kind of assignment now you can do okay i hope you can design these classes very easily you should know how to do this okay we have employ minus means what private public oh, means okay. please share the screen okay okay so let me try to share it so if you see here uh, now can you see some pdf with some uml diagram oh yeah okay great so if you see here uh, this is what my uh, expectation from you people and you all are awesome but uh, if you do the lab exercise you become more better okay so if you see here uh, there are some uml diagram like invoice item so i hope if you know little bit about uml diagram minus means private plus means what public what do you mean by hash pound sign that is called protected it's not written here but you should know and if there is no symbol that is called default okay and lots of code is written here and these are very good exercise about composition right now we have discussed today about composition author and book class so he is trying to guide you that please write a author class and a book has author how to read this diagram friends book has one author 
So what is his expectation that you should able to read this diagram and code it? Like book has M author. So now our requirement is changing book don't have one author, book have N author. So my, my point of view is that uh, if you try to start these lab exercise, you get uh, lots of benefit. And if you are struggling with somewhere, he has written all the instruction uh, very clearly. I personally don't believe you need my help. But if you need my help in solving this assignment, you are most welcome. So from my side, this is your assignment. Okay, and uh, it is better if I can get some sample of this assignment, how you're doing from your end. Like this is a very important uh, question, how to use big integer. Do you know something about big integer? No. Okay, so I request you to go through this uh, exercise 3.3 uh, 3 and come back, come back with some reading. Uh, in next session, we'll discuss more about it. Okay, so that's it uh, from my side. Do you have any questions, friends? No. Uh, please share the PDF and last. Okay, last sure, time. sure. So, uh, Naveen, I will share all this material with you. I, I request you share uh, all these things with the participant. Okay. Anyway, I, I will request Naveen to share it. I think it's not on the line. Right. Yeah. So, so bye for now. Bye from my side. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. So this is the last class before uh, uh, the year's end. Okay. So from my side, uh, happy new year. Okay. Welcome. Thank happy you. new year 2018 with uh, new great knowledge and uh, wish all Thank success you. from my side. Take care. Bye. Bye from my side now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Welcome.